David Elliott has had many jobs of the past few years with the New South Wales Government, a police minister, a transport minister, and the joint is better off for his service. He's now free of the obligations of uh, parliament, politics, and all the rest, which means he never holds back, but he particularly won't in the next couple of minutes. No pressure, though, David. <laughs> Lovely, and welcome to the Man Cave. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Paul. One of the good guys, thank you for your service over yeah. the past few years. It's been great. The, the joint is better as a result of it. Um, again, I don't want to get lost into the conversation, the Goldilocks of two left and two right. I want to talk about the machine of the New South Wales Liberal Party. Sure. How the hell does it not pre-select candidates a year before an election that's a fixed date? Yeah, and that's the great disappointment. And that, that, that was Dominic Perrottet's great frustration. Um, and he expressed that both privately and publicly. And, uh, and, of course, because we waited so long in some of these seats, we actually... We, we didn't even get the luxury of saying to the first person that came to us... Um, yes, you're the candidate. We had to go out and find um, uh, the, the last person that joined the party. Yeah. Uh, and and there, was, there were candidates in seats not far from where I, my electorate was um, who I'd never met. And I've been a member of the party since my 16th birthday. I've yeah. been a member for 36 years. And I'm thinking to myself, um, how are you going to be able to run in a marginal or safe Labor seat if you don't have any exposure to politics, let alone the Liberal Party? Well, also... What I, what I was talking about, about you know, and the, the history of New South Wales is, when there's a change of government, it's out for a couple of terms, right? So you're looking at eight years or 12 mm -hmm. years. That's a lot of time in the wilderness, sure, but it's also a massive opportunity to rebuild. I mean, you sat there and slowly watched the Labor Party turn from the dregs of the Keneally government yep. into a completely fresh group of people, who only four of which were even members of parliament when they lost last time. Conversely, the government was just slowly but surely filling with people who'd never been in opposition. So surprise, surprise, the hunger starts to fall away. How important is it that when the Liberal Party has its conversation about how to come back, it's realistic and says, you know what, let's get some mares up. Let's find some... Let's, let's set... The, before we sit on the two left, two right, let's just agree who the mutual enemy is and how to beat them. Well, that's exactly right. And that's why um, I know there are a lot... The purists in the Liberal Party don't like um, Liberals in local government, and maybe that is the case in the North Shore and the eastern suburbs, although there are Liberals in those councils. But we, we, we left vital ground exposed, to borrow a military term, last year in the local government elections because we didn't run one Liberal councillor in Parramatta. Uh, despite the fact that there were a couple of um, retiring members around that area. And what does Labor do? They put in a Lord Mayor, give her 12 months wearing robes around the city of Parramatta, uh, and then we, of course, come up with a candidate six weeks beforehand. Um, yet both of them were relatively unknown compared to the incumbent, Jeff Lee, but you're going to go with a mayor because mm. you've seen her at the citizenship ceremony. She's turned up to the footy. She gave your kid an award at Christmas um, uh, at the school presentation day. So, um, and if you look at the success we had in 2011, I could name you any number of seats. Granville, um, uh, Camden, um, Wallandilly. Uh, I, I could name um, uh, East Hills, uh, Prospect. We won all these seats with local councillors. Yes. Who had been on the council for, um, you know, since, since Moses was playing fullback. And <laughs> We've, and, and, they, and they knew everybody. They knew everybody's name. They knew every, the, the, the name of their wife. They knew what dog they had and who they backed last Saturday. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was fantastic to see them all come through. What was ludicrous to watch in the last couple of years, again, is when you've never been in opposition, uh, or many of the people have never been in opposition, then essentially it's the internal game yeah. of who's to the left or who's to the right of you. You had scenarios where... You were willing to keep serving. You were willing to, 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 to live a different life of even in the bloody upper house of New South Wales, right? Oh, but the factions mean no, he's too this, he's too that. How does one change the factional system? Because right now, when sort of the joint's been burnt down, it's an opportunity for people to try and, you know, steal that bedroom that they always wanted. How do you get back to a scenario where people understand what the ultimate goal is, which is election, not state executive roles. Yeah. yeah, well, Paul, I mean, there's two theories here. You can go the way of the Labor Party and say, we'll formalise the factions yeah. uh, and there will be proportions um, allocated to the factions, um, but st we're still relying on them coming up with quality. 
And at the moment, the factions aren't coming up with quality. Uh, they're coming up with people that have either been chosen because they um, had control of enough branches or they've been chosen because they got the backing of a certain property developer or a certain lobbyist or, or whoever. Um, so I'm not necessarily comfortable with that unless there are guarantees from the factions that there will be significant and serious probity checks and there will be talent scouts. The other option, of course, is the John Howard option, and that is plebiscites. Yeah. Um, but even then, we still have to make sure that we encourage more and more people to join the Liberal Party because they're just not joining. Well, but that's not just the Liberal Party, Paul. It's the Lions Club. Uh, you know, it's the it's the RSL sub branch. It's you know, it's church groups. We, we, people are just not joining anymore because they're too busy on social media. Well, exactly. But also, service has. I mean, the, the the truth is, service has changed. Right now, one of the things that I think is at least instructive about looking at the team is the way they market their candidates is about their community involvement. And the community involvement that used to be, where Tony Abbott literally picks up a fire hose, yourself yeah. the same, yeah. has now transferred into a whole series of other things that people are active in their communities about. Yeah. And to me, it's like it's, it's spreading the net about what the modern definition of service is. And maybe the modern definition of service is, has coached, their, their soccer team for 10 years. Yep. It, 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 that is, a, that is an, um, a, a very, very important point you've just made. And, and I think part of the pre-selection process we have to go through is to actually, again, formalise what community service have you done in your community? Have you been on the RSL sub-branch committee? Um, are you a member of, um, you know, the Country Women's Association? Do you volunteer? The, are, you, are you a local soccer mum? Um, you know, what, what have you done? Because I, mean, I, I, have, I have seen MPs get elected and complain that they've got to work on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> there is one famous Labor MP who complained after she was elected that she had too much weekend work. Now, yesterday I had a barbecue with my family and I'm pretty sure it's the first family barbecue we've had in 12 years. Absolutely. Um, because we just... I mean, the only time my family got to spend weekends with me is when the, the poor buggers had to come they with come me with to, you the, to the, the local and to da, da, da. the school presentation. But... Um, uh, and, 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 the, and, and unfortunately, in today's political environment, your families do have to... They do own it. I mean, my, my family have been in the media in, 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 in very difficult circumstances, but, you know, they've also... My wife's gone out to, to open up um, parks. Your I'm, missus is great. We she, love your missus. The lady, Elliot. Well, she's gone out and she's had to go and open a park because I got called away to a cabinet subcommittee and the community was expecting it. Now, um, not everybody's going to have that supportive family, but, but I've seen plenty of relationships die in politics and, therefore, the political career dies can you, because that hasn't happened. Can you believe we went five minutes without mentioning Matt Keane? Sorry. Anyway, nice to talk to you, David. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back anytime. Thanks. Let's keep talking, because right? there's bigger, serious things, and this is a good egg who deserves uh, to have his voice heard.